I think the type of spaces, the programming spaces that you're talking about, the places to unplug, we are getting requests. What we're seeing some more of, of lately are, um, I'll say, non multi-denominational or non-denominational, um, depending on how you want to define it, meditation spaces, spaces or spaces to come together. In essence, it's not really a, a in some cases, like a Hope College, it is a chapel. It's defined as a chapel. In other cases, it's, it's, it's very non-denominational, but the intent is it's a, a meditation space, a, an introspective space, a space for, for reflection or a space for smaller groups to come together um, for use in that, you know, in that capacity. And I, I think it's interesting with some of the statistics that you, you both presented about um, you know, this next group's sort of religious practices and how we're you know, hearing from student affairs or student life hey, we need a need for a, 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 a non-denominational denominational space to be used in that capacity, a flexible space that can be service, can be worship, can be meditation, can be you know, um, used for a variety of things throughout, throughout the day for programming events, as, as you sort of suggest. And I, and I think you're, you're hitting on a point that we found in a lot of the things we were studying is this idea that, this, that, that bringing all of these kinds of spaces together in which almost like services around campus could, could be rather than, rather than retail, this idea of bring a little bit of the health center into the, into the student union, bring the rec center. We recommended fitness classes around lunchtime um, so that students are again coming there. It isn't your traditional maybe student union programming, you're bringing in rec programming, but would that help contribute to a healthier lifestyle and make it available because the students again do they want to walk across campus go to a fitness class then come and get their food they just they're, they're not, they don't want to go to all these places so how do you make it so that they're getting their services not necessarily the retail not necessarily being able to buy a t-shirt and get a haircut in the same place but being able to, to get a health checkup go over to yoga and then pick up a wrap on their way out of the same space is going to be really really crucial um, and, and I do want to go back because I think you asked a really good question about this idea about the FaceTime thing and you're, you're talking about your daughter with FaceTime and studying kind of in tandem. Um, some of the things we found in our study was that uh, around dating specifically is that people were very, they were very appreciative of FaceTime but they did not replace personal one-on-one -on -one time. So if there's a possibility to be able to gather in real life that was always the preference over FaceTime or Skype. Um, and so, it, so just keeping that in mind that we want to create spaces where students can still gather face to face. They still want to hang out with their friends. At the end of the day, it's not fun hanging out over Skype. It just, I mean, you might be able to study next to someone over Skype, but when you want to hang out with them, you're in get it. You, I'm eating a burger. You know, I'm eating a burger on my end too. Like that's just not how. They, that's not where we're at. Just thankfully, not we're not <laughs> yeah. there yet. You know, they want to hang out together still. I think my my personal like student union experiences uh, an undergrad was very progressive in the sense that it wasn't as you said mollified it was like a few restaurants but this huge living room that like we could move all this furniture and the student union was the place that you went when you didn't want to go study and you didn't have to go to class but you didn't want to go home and so there's always someone again I went to a smaller school but there's always someone that you knew in the student union that you could just plop down and have that gathering time and it wasn't and then maybe it turned into you were working on your homework together or uh, you had a student group gather there but I think the, the the real point of it was it was a huge big living room we would watch you know uh, they would uh, they would stream like big events so I mean right now I, I still keep up with our union programming they're doing presidential debates where the students oh, yeah. would gather and watch that together because they have all these huge TVs that they would either bring in or already have because and then they would just make like bring your own pillow like to, to yeah. the presidential <laughs> debate kind of thing and you know find your place to sit down but they had food options as well that yeah. if you wanted to grab a bite you could but it wasn't centralized um, I also think about this idea of wellness, of if students are coming to college campuses with more mental health issues, is there a way that we could utilize a place where they gather and they feel comfortable, almost a home-like field a feature, um, to provide some sort of counseling services that removes the stigma of day-to-day, -day, just keeping up with your own mental health, um, whether that is guided meditations or checking in with a, a counselor. Is that something that is a service that we can remove stigma from because it's just commonplace and it's in a place that they I feel think comfortable that would be extremely in? Extremely helpful. Um, yeah. And we're thinking, I, I mean, we, we look into services of even taking therapy and mental health services to texting, but yeah. we know that it can't, we can't replace that FaceTime. So if we're talking about a mental health or a wellness center, can that be another element beyond just getting a health checkup or going to yoga? Can I connect with potentially a counselor or just someone to talk about my, my problems in a, between my classes or at lunch? Um,